Hello and welcome to another episode of The Chain, a series where one episode links to another via some means of something like director, actor, composer, subject matter, could be anything, um, and it has been. Last week we looked at um, Solo, a Star Wars story coming to you from a galaxy far, far away. This week, linking via the composer John Powell, we're very much at home here in the UK with the Ardman animation Chicken Run. Uh, obviously a DreamWorks animation movie, but that Ardman kind of Wallace and Gromit style of animation. And a fabulous score, actually in collaboration with Harry Gregson Williams. Um, uh, it's actually one of my wife's favourite scores. I I like it as well, but it's one of her particular favourites, so I couldn't really pass up the opportunity of taking this link. And I'm really looking forward to doing this one. Um, we're going to be looking at, as you can see on screen, 1M3, which is the main title Escape Montage. Um, if you're very eagle-eyed, you might notice there are a few notes down the far right of the screen. Um, I have actually gone ahead and put in the end of this queue, um, trying to guesstimate roughly how far I'm going to get in the next couple of hours. So hopefully we can link up with that and we'll have a nicely finished queue, which will be great. So um, without further ado, um, I'm going to crack on into this and we'll hopefully get this full queue finished. Um, this really appropriately is, um, well I think so anyway, orchestrated by Brian Fowler um, and uh, he has, sorry, not Brian, Bruce, sorry Bruce, uh, Bruce Fowler, oh, never leave that one down now, um, and he has very nice clear handwriting, so I'm hoping that um, this is going to go in nice and easy. That's what he said. Um, so, off we go. Um, hope you've all had a good week. It's been a pretty busy one here. We uh, launched the Iron Giant in full score, our latest full score publication. Uh, which is still available if you haven't managed to get hold of a copy yet. I'll post a link in the uh, chat box. Uh, a shameless promotion. In fact, here is a copy of the book. Um, with many pages of Lovingly recreated music, taken from the manuscript, Michael Kamen's manuscript. So it's a great score if you get a chance. So we have a look. Um, right, okay, without further ado. One interesting thing is that um, I'm actually missing a page from the manuscript in this, I noticed. Um, but there was a concert in 2006 in Madrid uh, called Son Cinemad and um, they performed, actually they didn't perform, but they were supposed to perform um, an arrangement of this, um, of some music from Chicken Run. Um, it was pulled from the programme at the last minute. I believe um, the orchestra was struggling with it a bit. And uh, yeah, it was pulled. But um, I've actually used a score from that to reconstruct that missing page, so that was handy. Now, here we go. Pretty standard orchestra, apart from um, Kazoo <laughs> um, and uh, a bit of whistling from the choir, uh, women's choir, I believe. So that'd be fun. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about portraying those instruments with note performer just yet, but we'll see what we do when we get there. Right, keep saying without further ado. Now, without further ado, let's get on with it. Let's uh, just turn you up a bit. Um, 
might need to turn that down in a bit. We'll see. Right. Uh, let's just let's zoom in a bit. Right. Right. Do I have a favorite stop motion animated feature? Oh. Well, uh, where the whole movie is stop motion animated, um, probably um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, if put on the spot. Um, but I do like the old Wallace and Gromits and things. Um, they're on quite regularly over here um, on the TV. Um, of which my favourite is the wrong trousers because of the uh, train scene at the end. I just think that's absolute genius. Um, laying the track in front of the train. first bar is actually marked um, crotchet equals 120 and then goes down to 116 and a half. Very specific. Um, one other thing that's a, a little um, uh, not unconventional but unusual um, for compared to other scores that I've seen manuscripts for is that this one has um, the chords written out in the middle of the score, so that's quite handy from an analysis point of view. Um, right, the violins ones two and three. That's going to be interesting. Let's do layout show. I'm going to make that violin two. Part two, violin two, part two, cello, cello. Do that. Okie dokie. Right. Oh, I've never seen that, the PJs, never even heard of it. It's quite funny, we've got um, a selection of music on a memory stick in our car, you know, it's kind of the, the car journey music stick, um, all kind of kid friendly. And uh, as we, we went out on a family day today, and uh, one of the things on there, which is stop motion, uh, there is some Nightmare Before Christmas, but there's also some Corpse Bride, uh, Victor's piano solo and the uh, piano duet from later on in the movie are on that stick. Um, so I like that one too. Again, another Elfman score. Right, this guy is in the trouble curve. So there's that. Let's have some of that. We're going to be. That's interesting. Um, violas are actually higher. Um, um, violins at this point. And that's great. 
Now, if you listen to the um, original soundtrack for this, you won't find this cue exactly as it appears in this um, manuscript. Um, I think there's some album edits which are on there. So you can actually hear this. Um, it's a combination of bits from the first track, which is called The First Escape, I think and uh, then main titles. Um, there's a good performance of it which um, somebody shared with me, um, Philip, who may even be in here, um, which the um, Film Symphony Orchestra, I think they're called, FSO, did uh, 2016, something like that. Um, but it is of this cue as it appears here. I think that's not actually slurred, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to play that separately. And is that, let's just make sure I've got that All right. We're not transposing, good. Oh, what a tease! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you've, you might not have noticed. I um, put the composer as John Powell here, not um, including Harry Gregson Williams. This cue is written by John Powell. Um, so. I'm going to do, well, let's do that first, hang on, um, so, flute one just has to get on with it, <laughs> you'll see what I mean when I say that in a minute, um, and then that goes to, um, Show that one. 
which I'm going to make piccolo. Own. And I don't need that there. So, um, as you see, Flute has to get on with doing the whole run. And oboes are actually going to use a technique we call dovetailing, which again is slightly appropriate given the subject matter. So Oboe 1 is going to finish up on the A there. And then pick up here. Voice two, do oboe two. So oboe two is going to pick up on the same A. So you see, they hand over to each other. Soon two is playing on contra at the beginning. And then um, in an accent for good measure. Right. Now we're into horns. So we've got six horns in this arranged. Uh, it's quite typical to arrange odds and evens like that. Um, rather than sequentially. Unless you're talking about something like um, Independence Day where you've got ten horns and then it's kind of a free-for-all. <laughs> it's mad. Uh, I'm enjoying doing that score at the moment. Let me on bass clef for the moment.
Actually, all six on that. Oh, well. <laughs> ah, awesome. Getting some links in there, Joseph. Um, Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so, interesting you mentioned for Miranda Richardson. Um, Harry Potter and Goblet of Fire and the Deathly Hallows. Who did you actually play? I can't remember now. Um, but there's actually um, Timothy Spall and um, Imelda Staunton in this as well. So um, being Peter Pettigrew and um, Dolores Umbridge. Um, so I have a funny feeling <laughs> that I'm going to be offering up Harry Potter... Uh, a Harry Potter poll, maybe. Um, uh, what would I do? Hmm. Quite tempted to do the night bus. Which will be... Oh, I don't know how far I'd get into that, because it's very busy. But um, that's an amazing jazzy cue. Uh, from Prison of Azkaban which for me is the best uh, John Williams Harry Potter score. Amazing score. Right, so trumpets get the same theme, but offset slightly. Hi Dominic, how are you doing? Busy week? Uh, it's not particularly typical to put um, trumpet one on one line, then two and three below would normally be sort of one, two, and then three. But um, I know from what's coming up later on that that will actually help, or it should help, um, with some of the voicing that's coming later. Trombone five, tuba one, two. That's a bit better. Um, well, they are with these guys. So that's really, really bringing out that tune. Now well, that's coming out too. Do, 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 do. Then that goes slightly. So, um, and then that bass trombone comes in down, down there, loud as you like, and 
to as an octaves. And snare. And that is full training. Snare run. You want for a snare run? Um, okay, good. I've only actually seen snare in this um, score so far. So if you came in late, I've done a little bit of the score later on. Hopefully, we're going to link up with that and get the whole queue in this week. If I've judged it right, or I could be finished in 15 minutes and the stream, <laughs> the stream will be over. Um, I don't think so. Um, interesting that they've not. I'm, I'm going to take that out for a minute. I haven't marked any slurs in. I'd be amazed if it's not slurred by the players, but um, we'll go with what's in this manuscript. Nothing change. Nope. This guy goes to Alton Cliff. And then we extend that. And stop.
crescendo. I think that crescendo just slowly builds all the way through. It's going to take that a lot. Put it back in. It's kind of a poco a poco, little by little. Um, then we'll bring in the bases. See what we got. What's going on there then? Oh, okay. Oh god, oh, all my um Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh that's gonna be a pain. Um I've set my template up and I, what I usually do is I um skim through the score. Look at the bar numbers where things happen, so like double bar lines, and put them in in the right place so I don't have to as I'm going along. The same with time signatures. Unfortunately, didn't notice that the manuscript starts on bar four. So everything's, <laughs> everything's three bars out. Uh, fun times. Um, that'll be fine. Let's lay plans and all that. That's quite interesting. I didn't expect the um, note performer um, bassoon sound to be sampled outside its normal playing range. That might open up some interesting possibilities for substitute instrument usage and what have you later on.
diminuendo to nothing. Do that. Put that one too. Okay. So we need one, two,
stop fiddling with the layout. God, how many times am I going to have to tell myself off about that? Right. If you fiddle with the layout whilst you're putting the notes in, invariably something you put in will shift the layout of everything and just undo all your work. So don't do it. <laughs> don't do it while you're going along. If that were um, a piano line or something, you wouldn't need to put the flat sign back in there again because you have it back here. But seeing as that's actually trombone four at that point, and they haven't have, if you broke this down into parts, they haven't had an A flat yet. You would need to put the flat sign in. That's why you do restate it on a, uh, a score staff where you've got two instruments playing. In case you were wondering, although I'm sure you're all well versed in that kind of thing. I know if Philip's in the room, he's going to be laser focused on this <laughs> this line. He's a tuba player. Um, Snare. <laughs> Could be what um, is in a lot of film scores as piccolo snare drum. I don't confuse myself later on. I'm going to um, change that to bar four for now so that my bar numbers match up with what I'm reading and I know what's going on. But I haven't gone mad. <laughs> I'll change it back later. That's just what's in the manuscript. Right, harp, uh, D.
<laughs> That's where you stand up, isn't it, Philip? Take a bow. And cellos are queued in at this point, but I'm not going to just put them in there for the minute. That's interesting. Um, okay, I guess you suddenly become mm. a boost. My favourite Mel Gibson film. Uh, that's really tricky. I do love so many of his movies. I mean, for and for so many different reasons. Like, um, you know, I love the Lethal Weapon series. Um, Love Braveheart, love um, I don't know. loads of movies that I enjoy. Um, even some of the you know smaller ones, well not smaller ones, but ones that kind of get forgotten now, like Ransom. Um, there was one where they remade um, a British drama, uh, it was like a TV movie, um, Edge of Darkness, 
I think was the title. Um, enjoyed that. And I think he's a brilliant director. I mean, to be able to pull off Braveheart as your first movie as a director and be in it at the same time you know, in such a prominent role, that was crazy. You know, at least with films like, I don't know, um, Search for Spock, where Leonard Nimoy is uh, directing, he's barely in it. But, uh, yeah, Braveheart. <laughs> not really um, many scenes he's not in. Um, I've never seen Apocalypto though. I've seen um, Pattern of Cries. Um, and I've not seen any of the sort of more recent stuff like. Um, it had a different title over here, I think. Um, the El. Gringo, or that was like where he had some some cartel thing down in Mexico. Um, or the Beaver, that was a bit of an odd one. What am I doing? What are you doing, Chris? Oh, right, I was checking this. Um, that sounded a bit odd, so we do it wasn't that. That's what it was. <laughs> Let's do that. I can just hear the plong in the wrong place in that chord. Let's try that. Get the gringo. Yeah. I'm sure it had an alternate title though, that movie. I enjoyed the um, the Patriot too. But I know that was a slightly controversial one for some composers, shall we say? Okay, here we go. Right. Right, so by this point, uh, Piccolo has gone away and he's gone to flute. So let's do two flute, which was in the skull. But we can do that. 
in here. circled in the manuscript which I assume means someone spotted the error there. orchestration in this though, which is good. is a bit frustrating. Um, or does it? No, that does say basically that's uh, two and four. Well, we can play with that later, but you can get those to overlap.
so and then that follows that basically. We don't need staccatos on pizzicato. It's a very different technique. Very um very, very rare that you'd put staccato on pits. Because that actually would then imply that you're going to damp the sound after plucking it. Now I am noticing that, that is probably a bar too early. So is that bar twelve? That's what should be there. Okay. That's better, I think. Uh, no, what is going on here? Hang on. Houston, we have a problem. That's better, I think. are a bit fierce. I can uh, so I can change that. Um, let's do 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 that filter for symbols. Hopefully I've only got those. Then I can change them all at once. Should we say oh, blast? Not gonna let me do it. Let's say 
doing anything. Um, oh, maybe I did need it on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right. Breath mark, shortened by 60. It's suddenly not having an effect. Um, You either get way too much or, <laughs> or no, no break at all. Oh uh, well, right. Let's focus on getting the notes in, shall we? Probably goes on for more. Let's see. And
Um, what's the Vistacons? I want clarinets. And I see one. Notice you've got different dynamics in different sections, so that's um, effectively written um, balancing. So it's quite important to make sure we get that right. Now our horns are splitting across lines 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6. Um, I can either change my layout or Coming uh, yep, I'm gonna change the layout here. Show horn three. So we're gonna do horn F no key because in parts for horns you don't put a key signature. So uh, that was through uh, two, four, six, wasn't it? So what we do is we'll chop off. Um, it's just copy. Let's have bottom notes. Right. So we've got the same voicing here. We're going to put uh, six on there. But now we've got a layout where we can continue here because it then goes to this, which is one.
Like that. And then up. Bar Nerum is um, Stick out on the other. And let's do one more page and get to that double bar, and then I'll do playback. Oh, <laughs> yeah. sorry, I forgot my um. My bar, double bar line's been in the wrong place, so if I do one more bar from the next page, and then I'll do playback. Um, Three, 
そんな気があるんですけどね。ファミリティーズディープフォーフね Okay. One thing in the float I want to check. Um, that doesn't sound too bad. What's that I want to check? Yes, that should have a fair amount. Thought so. Right. Then, so I left this off. Um, Quite a curious marking that to do to staccato. The staccato means half. Well, mm -hmm. staccato means short, but you would play that as a half the length of the note value. So, um, a quaver or eighth note. Um, but then the tenuto means to play it for its full length. So it's like play it short, but make sure it's the full value of a half that. Don't just play machine gun staccato. It's measured.
Tubers now. This is where the whistle comes in, which is not notated. So I'll do that in a second. on the string, so not um not bouncing off a string or lifting off pins activism Right, okay, I'm going to do that slightly differently. Delay not so.
back a touch. Um, let's go back to the, the double bar line. So I just need to put the um, whistle in, which I'm going to do here. It's just the same an octave higher. Just thinking because it's a women's choir, so they would probably um, notate it. Oh, I don't know, maybe it is like that. Let's put that in anyway. Whistle. My, uh, this is where my template falls apart. Because my time six are out of the step. Right. Great. In fact, now let's think about this. Started on bar four, so we've got three bars too many. No, that should do the trick actually. And brief.
So we put Clarinet 2 in first, then we put this on top. Interesting. Did you hear that? The um, staccato in voice two affected voice one. It's um, annoying. Right. Executive decision. I am going to put that down the octave. Um, but then have it sounding up the octave. No, am I? Am I? Yeah, I am. Um, with a hidden Ottava line. Um, so just up to there. Um, then kazoo um, C 
So how are we going to do kazoo? Let's think. It's kind of I don't know. What instruments can we do that? Let's try. Um, It's kind of a hybrid sound. We'll probably merge a few instruments together to get it. No, it's not going to be sitting, is it? But we'll figure something out. Counter on that. On there, which goes to one bit into there, so I'm going on and there, one P at that point, and coming down more, probably continuing on, but I'm going to do that.
See, I don't think I want that to be all kind of there. Um, hmm. So we'll do that executive decision. Um, I suppose it could still be pits. But then why would you put the brake in there? Why would you put staccatos? I'll stick, stick with that. No, you can't do it. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> what are you telling me now? <sighs> right. Uh, 
Okay, right. So that, that, that still fits in my head. So more pits, and then that is not going to be a pit there. That's going to be Marco's one. Um, Right, okay. There's a few inconsistencies here, like suddenly we lose half the bases on this in this bar. I'm gonna continue that. And then here um, we've got And that is half bits, half carton. Right. Okay. parts. Okay, uh, let's just have a listen from the double bar. some way from the bit that I thought I might get to by now. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. Let me just put my head down and
Let's so take staccato. So it's got something a bit different, and they are still basically. Thank 
Because same time, just by keying that in. Um, right. Yes, first. Thank you. 
Okay, oh, and then we've got an indication here to use the lower snares. <laughs> I guess there was a piccolo snare. Um, there's no difference in sound on um, note performance snare. There is no piccolo version, so just one one pitch fits all. So let's put these in, and I'll just put a um, Do our page reminders. We do pick still like that. Okay. Um, can zoom. strange voicing. Let's do it differently. Let's do I'm just conscious of the fact I'm about to run out of time in terms of uh, people wanting to go to bed. You know, right? So um, I'm going to have to wind this up soon. Term, of course, photocopy fluff.
Um, right, so firing two goes to. Is anyone still here or am I just talking to myself now? <laughs> First sign of madness, isn't it? That and baggy trousers. Let's see if anyone gets that reference. still here. Hello Joseph. <laughs> it's gone all quiet. I'm feeling all self-conscious. Um, right. Bracketed, so it's um, and bracketed for strings means that um, it's not divided between two players. You play both notes on, on two strings. Um, let's do that. And this is copy, but not. Um, I think my kids have only seen Tikkun Run a few times, but I could be wrong. Um, they've seen Wallace and Gromit quite a lot, because that's on um, Netflix, I think. Um, 
over here at the moment. And so you know you get that kind of curated content. Um, and it's um, regionalized, so you know being a pretty British centric thing. I know they're all on there. I think all the creature comfort stuff is on there as well, which is um, the Nick Park TV stuff. My daughter's very much into Harry Potter at the moment. So we've been reading the books to her. Um, and she's, she's at the Battle of Hogwarts and the last book at the moment. And we've said as we've gone along that at the end of reading each book you can um, watch the movie but not watch the movie before you've read the book. So um, yeah it's quite good. And she's only seven so it's pretty dark for a seven year old. At uh, the final book. So, okay, then that would be F. Dynamics in. sound okay. Just set those last four bars a second. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting. There are some pretty major differences, but then... I don't know, I, I read the books after I'd seen the movies. Or I, after I'd seen the first movie. Um, so I always kind of envisaged the characters as the actors. Um, whereas my wife was the other way around and she's not a massive fan of the movies um, because of the way they differ and the, the way they differ from her mental image. Um, but uh, I like them equally. I've just realised um, I'm getting to that climactic point and it's going to be a really horrible place to, <laughs> to stop um, the stream. So I'll go on as, as long as I can, but uh, if Anna's like, right, I want to go to bed. Then, uh, yeah, unfortunately at the moment I'm uh, I don't have a dedicated workspace. Well, I do have a dedicated workspace, but it's within the house. So, got to work around everyone else. Um,
It's nice and easy. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite interesting um, if you listen to a score, um, a CD as outside of the movie as well, and if it's being cut in the movie to fit the picture. Um, there's an example in Independence Day actually, which I'm working on obviously at the moment, and um, there's the evacuation cue, which on the soundtrack and in the book that I'm doing it will match the soundtrack it's obviously as written but there's a certain part where the they probably extended the scene slightly and they literally just loop a bar <laughs> so if you listened to it as it sounds on the movie if it was written out like that it would sound a bit different. It kind of um, jarred for me slightly because I was um, going through and um, looking at the sync points and you know, where the, the music synchronizes with the film hit points, and uh, one of them didn't line up, and that was why. Um, it's a bit like that in Behind Child, actually, as well. There's actually a, a bit in the book for the Iron Giant where I've um, marked it to say, you know, this is not, this is on the OST, um, but it's not in the film. They actually cut, but they cut the music from the film for the same length of time. Um, so I'd literally just cut those bars to silence, and then it re-enters in the right place. Um, da, 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 da. Right, okay, let's do it like this. Um, so. Is the same. Two so reminder in there. Um, I'm quite excited about tomorrow actually. I think um, most of the North America people who ordered um, copies of the Iron Giant on day one should be receiving them. So hopefully I'm going to see lots of tweets and Facebook posts and things saying that I've received them. So, it's always an exciting time for me.
Nice. Tuba, so let's do tuba. Hmm. Okay, dokey, right. So this is where the, it builds and then the violins go off on their little ostinato. So, let's see what we can do. Um, horrible the way that's laid out, but I'm not going to fiddle with it.
Get those. Um, Right, okay, let's see. Um, Carl Viola 1, so that's going to be easy. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we've got that twice.
this. No, I don't want that. Uh, oh, come on. So, right, okay, I apologise in advance, when I play this back it's going to stop just before the climactic kind of recapitulation, um, but uh, let's have a listen. say um, I'm, I'm a bit far from linking these two up a bit further than I'd hope to be um, okay let's do this let's do um, show on there. Right. Uh, do you want to have a listen to that bit at the end and, and see how that sounds as well. I'm going to carry on for a second though and get as far along as I can. I'll do the next page. You say yes or no if you want to skip to the end. Tricky reading all those letter lines. Um, so A. C sharps out the right. Hang on, what is that then? One, two, three, four letter lines. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to play it on A clarinet instead. Um, and not B flat. Let's uh, do something that makes sense with this key as well. Um,
two business to bank strong. <laughs> Precision tempo marking it. So we were on 116.5 BPM. We're now on 116.3. So if you can hear an audible change of 0.2 of a beat per minute, um, that's what happens at this moment. <laughs> um, oh no, this is not the. It's not the. Um, yeah, I thought it was. Staccato, whereas that is specifically staccato. That's with that. And then violas are on F sharp. Is a nice and open like this, then I might make some pretty good progress. Mark for Marcato. Um, interesting that it's got those on. Where is the. Tuba does not want to do that. Right.
horns coming then. So horns now are back to that um, uh, one, three, five, two, four, six layout on two staves. So we're going to make that work here where they come in. So one, three, five, get. So five and six are on the right notes then. Let me put that there. And just need the light in there because they're not doubling. And then um, here, put in an instrument change so that we can change the naming.
like so. marking for Glock but no Glock written so I'm gonna have to f see what that is See if I can find out what that Glock is. Um, where are we? We are forty-five. So I think. there. 
Right, okay, so make that block once more. Yes, fine. Um, okay, put a reminder in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, then that needs to be. Leggero actually means light, so maybe that's what I'll put in there. Instead of light, like that. Have light as well. Oh, I suppose that's sweet bit of RMF. Okay. Sweet bit of a ledger suddenly. the glock part in there while I can. Um, yeah, I think we miss, may be missing some bass drum or something like that out of the uh, manuscript. I don't know, I'll have to listen to the audio and see. Um, ooh, okay, how far off am I from linking up? Um, where are we? Four, two, three, four, maybe four, four or five pages. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get there in a reasonable time. Let's finish this passage.
So we get some more fun dovetailing here. Um, So dovetails with flute one and two. <laughs> After going to all that effort of um, condensing them down again, <laughs> they spread out again in a sec, so I think I'm going to have to do that and take away that. And then this gets not that and not that. Uh, 
and so we've still got one one and three doubling and five playing the same note so that's actually effectively a three and then the same deal there with two four and six because then here we get one and two take this F and trombone three and four are on A's. So, um, uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. that phrasing in. Um, then like Interesting, maybe it's not slurred. 
Um, is that enough already? No. So we don't really need any of that in either. Um, right. Together just for that bit, and then it goes like um. So, and then cellos. Why did I hear cry? Seek change. Oh. 
Ahí va. Rather not do it quite so high, but um, okay, so do that. And then here we've got another G, 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 G. Good, it's going good. Right, okay. Um Thank you. 
funny feeling and there's four of them asleep downstairs. So you might actually get to do this. I'm hearing signs of movement. <laughs> Scratch that idea then. Right, okay. They concur, no, they don't, so that would be Uh, 
then got okay. like we need to divide the areas as well. Layout uh, area two. put the base in and then I think we'll have a little listen to what we've got because we've done quite a lot there um, Uh, 
Let's just do one more tiny bit of the next bar. Um, just to finish that, which goes harp. Oh, is that how it's supposed to be? Yes. There. Um, Right, so harp goes. Uh, that doesn't make sense. That can't be that because that must be. Why did I do it? Right. Um, yeah, just that. Okay. So that's where the kazoo comes in. <laughs> See if I could kind of do that there as well, couldn't I? Um, sounds nothing like a kazoo, obviously. the other bit I've got to. Well, we're not too far away now. We made pretty good progress. I think we're three pages, maybe. Uh, one, two, maybe two pages away. So listen. Um, do that. Do that.
So, no, what have I got left to do in the gap then? Uh, not much. Let's see what we can get done. Not sounding too bad, though, is it? Bit iffy on the <laughs> kazoo and the whistle doesn't really come out. Um, Staccato, Um, this guy has changed to bass clef and he's doing I'm so close now I can taste it 
<laughs> a couple of pages away in a bar. Um, am I going to get to it before Anna wakes up? And realizes and comes to bed. We'll see. Back to a normal snare again. Got our kazoo's in already, got our harp in. But we really need to That's a funny voicing again. I don't know why they wanted to put everything in the right hand except for one note. Not right hand, it's not quite the same as piano, but um so separate that out a bit.
That violas are together on one star, so I can do that. Um, I need to split out my bases again, so all right, do that. Who's going to pit left there? Right. Okay, so we do that, we do that, we do Right. 
time has to be underneath the next one. We're nearly there, look! Shall we? One. Enough. And that down and up to so close. <laughs> um, show controversy. Right, um, 
from the moon. That's <laughs> you could well be. It's been quite a long video, hasn't it? But I'm so near the end now that I actually want to press on. Um, no, I'm, after I've done this page, I'm one bar away from the bit that I made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. I don't know if anyone else actually has that. You know, it's just a UK thing. But here's what I made earlier.
We are so close. Right. Um, Same there. But, but I didn't get that note. Copy it from the horns there. Uh, in there, yes. that. Uh, cellos are definitely split.
Instead of the half bits we had before, um, bug, um, then we get One bar to go. This is going to be good. Right. Um, that is with these guys. Uh, trumpet one gets that one to up. And then get that two. With four and five, so that gets that. Oh, yeah, we're so close.
Yes. Okay, all right, let me see something quickly. How to press on? Sometimes it goes like this. So that needs to go here. Last little marking. So right now we've got no, none of those, we'll hide them, no piano. So we'll hide that too. There is only one harp, so we'll change that. slightly that should be good to go fab right <clears throat> of course we say are you ready it's better be good he says Let's go.
forgot. I hadn't done the last page. <laughs> oh, when I was prepping last night, I got tired. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, so close. I think there's a bit of glockenspiel missing in there as well, and uh, a bit more whistling or kazoo. Ah, one page, one page. Um, it's way too. Oh, is it too late? Oh, I don't know. Let's see what we can do. So many whistle birds. So where did I get to? Yeah, I definitely think there's some some glock or something. It's a couple of bits in the score are just not written in. Um, so we can get to three, four. Okay. Ooh, so close and yet. Um, it doesn't need to be that. Hmm, okay, and also some funny layout where I had it on. Three, two stakes for the horn. So it doesn't go down to two there. That needs to go there. It doesn't really need in there to yeah, I suppose we could. Why not? Um so then here we need to change that to form left with no key. that up and bassoon needs a one there like so um is that just one there no. no. Okay, so then we've got We don't use that. Um, good.
I see what I've done. I see what I've done. Right. Um, mm, okay. Bit of low bass trombone there. Two tubers like that. Um, bit of snare there. Should save it. Um, not that. Should prevent it from doing a silly layout thing, but we'll see. Um, C major. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, easy peasy.
That's funny that that's got tenutos on it when everything else is staccato. from another wind part. <laughs> it's not a marking that you put on strings. Um, right, okay. Um, right, Tellos, um, one, two, three,
Here, top right, bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. Um, it's already divisible, so that's fine. Right. Let's have some of that, shall we? Right. Um. <laughs> okay. Now, let's look. Um, Hulk Bliss. Right, okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. There's a little bit more fiddling to do. Um, but it's 1 am and I'm going cross eyed. <laughs> so I'll leave it with one more full playthrough for you. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and anyone who's watching this back after the fact, I hope you enjoy the episode. Um, if you haven't already, and you're watching this, please like and subscribe, because it really helps the videos to get seen by other people. And hopefully I'll see you again next week. Um, I'll be putting up a poll... Uh, to vote on a Harry Potter score, I do believe, because uh, with the number of actors that link to the Harry Potter series, it seems like a no-brainer to me, and there's some fantastic music in that series. So, 
Anyway, I'll leave you with one final playthrough, and I bid you adieu.